So, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, uh, tonight's featured organization is particularly meaningful to us because Jill and I have been doing something there for the last year and a half. Uh, so actually, Jill, why don't you start by saying what the residential facility at Aviva is? Well, um, 36 adolescent girls reside at Aviva full time. The majority of them are coming from environments where they have been abused or abandoned or both. So they may be feeling angry or depressed or hopeless and Aviva provides them a structured environment and a treatment model that includes art and movement therapy, independent living classes and self-esteem programs. So if any of you know or have ever worked with any kids from circumstances like these, you might think that for even one of these girls to have a chance at success, she would need to be surrounded by a village of teachers, therapists, social workers, lawyers, volunteers and mentors, and a cornucopia of other individuals willing to give even half a care at least part of the time. And even then, she would have to be someone of great inner fortitude and resolve with above average intelligence and unwavering attitude towards reshaping her own destiny. And you may think that, because it's true. So where do you start? Well, tonight, let's start by watching a video and we'll let the girls at Aviva tell you in their own words what life is like for them. Take a look. The black side, it's um, representing you know, my past. My past is kind of like dark, you know. I have um, the gun. It's representing my crime that I'm here for in Geneva. The F, my grades in school. All the times I've been to jail. The drugs and stuff, drinking I used to do. The heart, you know, it's in the red of the wine. It's like representing like, kind of like a broken heart. Make me see. third grade when I started getting into trouble, when I was about two years old. About 12, 14, and 15? 12, 13. The judge sentenced me to juvenile hall because of my behavior. Like, you do not want to go to juvenile hall. It was horrible. It was, I was 12. It was for um, assault battery. I was at the jail and stayed there for three months, so I'll be able to pick me up. I was scared. It took me a while to know I had support, but I did. I was 15 when my dad passed away. I had not really ever talked to anybody about it. Through certain arts that we do, I got to let out feelings about my dad. I have the gates of heaven. I wanted to think of a place where my dad would be. I wanted him to be there, so if I asked for him, at least I know where he was at. So, I made heaven a box. When I first came here, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to talk to any of the therapists. I didn't want to have them do it. I didn't trust them. I felt like I was just in another gym that I had to get out of. You get a lot of one-on-one attention. They just pump you up, you know, like, you know, you're doing good, you know, keep up the good work, and, you know, that, that helps me a lot because that's, you know, somebody's noticing, you know, I didn't have that at home. The rules were good for me. I needed that, having to answer to a structural thing. And, uh, I liked it. The, this side, it's supposed to be, you know, how I am now and how I've changed. You know, here I'm having my family that has been there, you know, throughout this whole Thing. My family supports me, teachers, you know, staff. I really didn't like like myself, you know. That's the thing where, where it comes out down to, you know, you don't like yourself and you don't want to show it, so you embarrass other people, make fun of other people. Now, you know, like I said, I love myself. I make my parents proud of me. You know, Viva has, you know, changed my life tremendously. ways I can't even understand. They help me. They help me emotionally, physically, mentally. Better relationships with people, more trust. How to move on, to not stick to, to the past, you know. No more fear and believing I can do things. A view of has changed my life. We grew a bond that you couldn't break.
welcome the volunteer presenter for Aviva, Elizabeth Rulon. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for inviting me. So um, maybe you could start us off by just telling us a little bit more about who the girls at Aviva are and the circumstances that bring them to you and what kind of services you can provide once they arrive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the girls that come to Aviva come through one of two doors. Um, we've got the kids who come through the Department of Child and Family Services, DCFS, um, and the girls who come through the Department of Probation. Both these groups of kids have been removed from their homes for um, by the court system for some severe circumstance, abuse, neglect, um, abandonment, um, yeah, they just, they've all gone through these experiences and we find that that's kind of a common denominator among them. Like, the girls who come through probation um, come because they've committed some kind of petty theft or crime. Um, and the girls who come through DCFS come because somebody found out that they were being abused and neglected and um, made it known. But it's really, it's the same population underneath. It's just the different ways. Um, it was discovered. So um, as far as services we offer, um, we offer a 24-hour, 24-7 uh, residential care for these girls. They come and they live in a structured environment. Um, we offer them a home. It's a place for them to live um, and for them to start that healing process and that growth process. And um, yeah, just get used to a start to begin the process of living a different life. Uh, well, that's what one of the things we wanted to talk to you about because uh, there's a quote from Hillary Clinton that I love that is, talent is everywhere, but opportunity is not. Mm -hmm. And certainly we've seen that in our experiences with the girls in Aviva, not just them not having had opportunities that mm -hmm. a lot of kids have, but them not knowing what other opportunities exist in the world in terms of education and careers and, and just basic day-to-day -day life stuff, different, that there are different mm -hmm. ways to be. So Absolutely. how do you go about exposing them to these things that they haven't seen modeled in their own lives? Um, something that's really interesting is that a lot of the girls when they come in, they either have no idea what they want to be because no one's ever asked them, or they want to be probation officers. I remember, um, being, I remember being told that when I took the tour and just being floored by that. Because, because that's, that's what they know. That's like the professional career that they've been exposed to. Um, so from the time they get there, um, we start them in a program called ILS, Independent Living Skills, um, to teach them basic basics of life, um, how to have a budget, how to open a bank account, how to, um, how to pay your bills, um, things like that. And then also, too, we really rely heavily on volunteers to help expand their worlds um, and offer them these different experiences that get them thinking about, gosh, what do I want to do with my life? Um, we have, we've had a group come in called Youth in Action Film Collaboration um, that did, that brought in 60 volunteers, um, producers, writers, directors, and they created this um, film project with the girls and screened it at Sony and you know the girls felt like a million dollars and we had girls from that that wanted to pursue a film career in some aspect. Um, we are working with Relativity Media right now and they're uh, scholarshiping a couple of our girls for their summer program. Um, so we, we, we work with so many volunteers that have so many life experiences um, and some of them, you know, sponsor outings, put on workshops, um, help the girls, you know, expand their world through trips to museums, um, trips to Griffith Park, um, these kinds of things, just push their horizons. I think, um, to speak to even the flip side of that, you know, obviously to, for Aviva to fulfill its mission, you have to appeal to people outside of the kind of communities these girls come from, for people who haven't had to entirely transform their lives and learn an entirely new set of skills, behavior, cultural norms and rules, 
um, sometimes there can be a lack of empathy as to what it takes for these girls and also a lack of understanding as to why not every girl just greets you with open arms and joy and gratitude for all that you are offering them. Um, so how do you help people who haven't come from that experience understand the perspective that the girls are coming from? Um, that is a great question. And um, this is my, something that I brought along just to help people. If you were wondering. Why yeah, <laughs> well, she I brought us a gift of trash. I, um, I brought this along as, as a tool to help you put yourself in the mindset of these girls. Um, when these girls arrive at our doorstep, everything they own is in a garbage bag with them. Um, maybe it's one or two garbage bags, maybe they arrive with the clothes on their back. Um, but imagine if that was your world, if everything you owned fit in one garbage bag and the fight or flight instincts that would go with that to protect these few things that you have. Um, and so for us to bring them into this environment where that's the world as they've known it and to tell them here's all this new stuff that we're offering you um, trust us it's great yeah it's <laughs> and a number of these kids too have been bounced from one placement to the next um, they're all foster kids they've all been removed by the court system um, so it's it's this whole new structure and talking about things that may be hard or hurtful. And, you know, they're 15, 16 years old. Like, that's... Yeah, <laughs> they're starting that, with teenagers. They're a pleasant and welcoming group. Like, they're teenagers. <laughs> In every circumstance. There's teenagers yeah. who've been through um, horrifying experiences that no one should ever have to go through, let alone as a child. Um, and... And have never had evidence to the contrary, that this time will be different. Yeah, exactly. And you're saying no to your They don't know how long they're gonna be different. there, you know? There's this caring people, but they could be, they could run away, they could be here today, gone tomorrow. Like, it's just, it's a really hard place for them, so. Well, you were talking about the different sorts of volunteers and the different mm -hmm. sorts of things we can expose the girls to. Um, Kate and I teach improv and creative writing as part of the independent activities program at Aviva. Uh -huh. uh, there are lots of other classes. Makeup and cooking, I know, are very popular. Sometimes yes, are. we are told by girls on their first day with us they would rather be in those classes. Yes. So if you can um, do makeup or cook, you will be a hero. <laughs> but, but we always win over by the end. By the end, yes. By the end. Okay. But uh, what are some things that people can teach, and what does uh, what is involved in signing up and getting started? Um, so signing up and getting started, um, you can talk to me after the show, <laughs> or. Um, you can go on our website, www.avivacenter.org, and there's a volunteer section, and you start by downloading the application, and I call you after you've sent it in, and we go from there. Um, but in terms of what you can teach, it's we've had everything under the sun. Um, we've had cooking, comedy, acting, yoga, volleyball, basketball, beauty, um, arts and crafts, jewelry making. Um, it's, it's kind of a... We had, here's an example, we had um, a volunteer come to, come in and said, I really want to teach an IA on French culture. We were like, okay, we'll try that. <laughs> um, and she was so excited and so passionate about it and sharing the experience. She wasn't even French. Um, and she, she, it she up. brought in the food How and <laughs> talked about um, the culture and the language and all these things. And the girls got so into it. And so it's really a matter of bringing something that you are good at or passionate about or excited about and letting um, that be contagious and spread to the girls. So obviously what we're trying to show with this show is that you can do good while having fun. And that's oh, yeah. sort of what our volunteering is, is that we're having fun for Absolutely. an hour a week. Um, but if somebody can't commit to a full six week course, are there other ways to volunteer that are less time? Definitely. Um, Tutoring is a big one. So um, something I've learned is that just through working at Aviva, it's a lot easier to pass a child through grades instead of holding them back. Um, so we'll have girls come in that are 14 years old that should be in eighth grade or freshman in high school, but they're at a third grade reading level um, because they've just been passed along. Um, so tutoring is really important and really, really helpful for our girls. Um, Mentoring is huge, is hugely, hugely important. 
Um, and it's something we take very, very seriously. We really look for um, adults that want to invest deeply in a child's life um, for about an hour in a week, whether it's meeting or on the phone or whatnot. But the hope is that that mentor would really commit to this child and continue with them after they move on from Aviva. Um, other opportunities, you can lead a one-day workshop. Um, uh, girls love the beauty spa day type workshops or an outing, um, plan an outing for the kids. And then um, in a separate vein, we are also a fully licensed foster care and adoption agency. And um, if you want to go the other way to the biggest time, <laughs> to the biggest commitment, the largest you can make. Commitment. Well, no, 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 I wasn't actually going there. Oh. <laughs> I was going um, to a lower commitment than that. Um, every six to eight weeks, we have foster care parent trainings, and um, we have, they bring all the kids. So the parents are being trained by the foster care staff, and we've got like 40 kids running around our administrative building um, from toddler through young teens. Um, so if you ever want to come out and play with a whole bunch of kids, it's a good opportunity. It's really, it really is fun, but we count on volunteers to um, play with them, read with them, um, hang out with them, take care of the babies. So, so um, obviously we're shining a light on a lot of the wonderful things you're accomplishing at Aviva, but if we're being completely honest, not every girl who comes through Aviva is a success story. Um, but I know what keeps you going, what keeps the rest of the staff going, are these girls who do choose a different path mm -hmm. and do make a change. So are there are there things you see in common between the girls who use their time at Aviva to turn things around for themselves? Um, definitely, and I've, I've considered this before and thought about what is it, um, what's the difference between the girls who um, make it and slip back into um, former habits and um, not as great lifestyles. Um, and two things that I've noticed among these girls that um, go on and break this cycle. Um, one is that they have some sort of relationship with a caring adult. Um, whether it's a family member, um, and there's some situations where, you know, mom's boyfriend was abusing the girl, Mom decided a new child was really, was taken from the home, and um, mom decided she wanted to have that relationship with her child, so got rid of the boyfriend. Um, and we call those, you know, there's if there's a family reunification plan, um, it might be another relative, or it might be a mentor that really makes a huge difference in one of these girls' lives, or it might be um, a staff person. We have some amazing men and women who work with these girls. Um, and our girls, the ones that make it and come back and visit are the ones who a lot of times have bonded um, with someone who has encouraged them and told them, hey, your life can be different. It doesn't have to be the way it's been up until now. Um, and then that, the other thing that I see that these girls have in common is that they have some kind of aha moment um, where they, they realize that this really is an opportunity for them to turn things around, that they don't have to be the victim of their circumstances, that they can be survivors. Um, and it takes different things for different kids. Um, I've heard girls tell stories of you know lying in a cell in juvenile hall and realizing that is not <laughs> what they wanted to, that's not how they wanted their life to look because you know, like that tends to lead towards jail after you're 18. Um, so, yeah, the, the adult relationships and the encouragement and that kind of may be even being the catalyst for this moment of things can be different and I want that. And I think it gets back to the idea that um, they have to have someone show them that there is an option. Absolutely. And because a lot of girls lie in that cell and think, I don't want this to be my life, I don't know what other option there is. Absolutely. And so, it does take a village. Speaking of people for whom it's taken a village, we had a very interesting night tonight. We, and speaking of girls who have chosen a different path, uh, we had a girl booked from Aviva to come here and speak about her experience. She opted not to come at the last minute. <laughs> However, we had a girl coming who we also knew from Aviva to sit in the audience and enjoy the show. 
I know. She and, had uh, previously been in our classes. She had also been in one of our classes, and so I called her <laughs> foster mom and said, hey, do you think Kiana would want to come talk about Aviva on the show? She said, I'll put her on the phone and ask her, and of course, Kiana said, I'm there for you, Kate, whatever you need. I love this girl so much, I can't even describe it. So she is here to be the representative of the resident of Aviva, so please give an extra super huge warm welcome to Kiana Watkins. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming and, and being our shining example of goodness. <laughs> no problems. Kiana <laughs> is actually, uh, she is our first repeat guest on Broadly Speaking because she was in the first show we ever did performing stand up here. <laughs> She is, she is the Regis Philbin of Broadly Speaking, just coming back over and over. <laughs> so, um, without getting into anything personal or uncomfortable to talk about, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what your time at Aviva meant for you? So, my time out of Aviva, out of, out of, of, of <laughs> my time out of Aviva was, I guess you can say, um, I guess every girl would say it was a lot different. And it's true in the system, every case is different. Mm -hmm. um, mine was especially different because I was there the longest than pretty much they had had in years. I was at Aviva, whereas most people stay six months or more, like six months to like nine months. I was at Aviva for two years. <laughs> And so um, I learned a lot there about myself, as well as, you know, kind of the ins and outs of how to work people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of did because, I, I mean, we talk about it takes a village and all the opportunities for an adult to come in. And I, I mean, I've seen your village. I have been to parties hosted by your mentor with filled with people who have all taken an interest in you and some time in you. And so I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about what it's like to be the recipient uh, of that kind of attention and, and if that had the effect that we, we all hope it has. So that is crazy to kind of grow up with this, you know, keeping, your, keeping watch over you, like th this is what watches me at night. You know, you didn't have mommy and daddy and stuff like that. It's like, oh, it's not my soft story or whatever, but you know, like that's the thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, I used to like lay in bed at night and like make the wish on the star and like go into the tunnels and like do the, do the little hold your breath and make a wish thing and always wish for like regular parents. I just wanted regular parents and regular life. I got like 50. <laughs> <laughs> I made way too many wishes. <laughs> Like, it's just, they were answered, and then answered, and it was like sending the text, like pressing send too many times, and it just goes boop, 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 boop. I got so, so many people, like, have my back. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. It started out with one, and then it ended up with, like, 40. But it also, I mean, these people wouldn't, you could have 50 parents, but if you're not receptive to what's being offered to you. You have something inside of you that says, I'm going to have a different oh, life yeah. than what what started out for me. Oh yeah, I mean, I've, being at Aviva, being in placement in general, growing up in placement and stuff, like, you can see the people who, you know, had it handed to them on a silver platter, could have easily picked, like, they were in a fork of the road, and, you know, just weren't ready for the help. And it's like once you accept the help, then it's totally like, you know, smooth, you know, smooth sailing. Once you ride the tide, it's okay. But you know, everybody sometimes, you know, there's a lot of estrogen and teenage <laughs> hormones going on in the there's house. There's a lot of estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> so like, sometimes, you know, a lot of the time, everybody was fighting against so much, and everything that came by was. Just kind of like, oh, well, I'm fighting against everything else. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to fight it. <laughs>
Well, you had a, a mentor who, uh, a friend of ours, Betsy, who, um, what? Is Betsy here? Oh, well then, never mind. Um, <laughs> we're going to point her out, she's going to stand up and say, but whatever, Betsy. Uh, but Betsy, you had an interest in stand-up comedy, and Betsy was a comedian, and she really gave you a lot of guidance and a lot of opportunities in that way, and that kind of, I feel like that was a big catalyst to open up a lot of things for you. Is that true? Am I just making that up? It's actually super true. To be honest, I didn't even know I liked stand-up comedy. Um, I, li I knew I liked to laugh, and I knew that I was Really interesting. Liked to laugh. <laughs> Liked to laugh. <laughs> Try to find that in other kids. <laughs> I, I just I, I knew I was a smart ass. I knew that. Like, okay, teenage kids are smart asses. We all know this. But I'm ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like it's bad. <laughs> and, and I don't know, I didn't know I liked comedy until I met Betsy and then we went, well, you know, one thing led to another, wait, <laughs> appropriately. <Yeah. laughs> and I just, I don't know, we ended up going to, like, I got opportunities to perform at, like, actual clubs. Like, I stood on the Laugh Factory stage and the improv stage. You have a show coming up at the Comedy Store, I correct? Do. I do. Do you know what date that is? The, no. Let's <laughs> <laughs> so check with her mom after. <laughs> Um, I think, but I, I love that you say that because, I mean, I said earlier that you're going and having fun for an hour and a week doing something you already love, and maybe you think that's not a big deal or that doesn't make a huge difference, but it may be the thing that somebody latches onto and says, this is the rope, you know, and I think it's just, I, well, I'm very glad you're here, and I love you, and I love your story. <laughs> so, you are no longer at Aviva, so can you tell us a little bit about what where you are now, what you're doing, and then maybe what you're hoping is next? Well, now, um, so I got to Aviva when I was 13 and I left last year and now I'm 17. I just turned 17 like last week. Yay! Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> and um, I am, um, yeah. <laughs> I've, um, I, I've been doing a lot in theater. I go to, uh, Grand Arts, that real, like, you know, like, Jesus is a water slide thing. Oh, I think that's how. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of theater. I'm directing a Tommy. Wow. <laughs> and I've been doing a lot of acting and music. I'm, I'm up to eight instruments now. Wait. Last time we saw each other, I was at seven. I know. I what did you add? Slacking off a little bit. Sorry? What did you add? I added bass. But like... It's oh. all about the oh. bass. No oh. trouble. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> and you, uh, in the last year, you were, you found a foster mom. Or she found you, or you found each other. Betsy found... Betsy knew my... It was my first public show. My first ever public show. And uh, it was this weird place, and I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not going to explain it. I'm not going to go there. And <laughs> and um, Betsy knew the president of that place, and I didn't. I didn't even remember seeing the person. That's cool. And so then, fast forward a year, and it gets to the point where Evie was like, "All right, kid, your social worker's not really doing much." Like. How do we help you? What are we gonna do? And I was so tired. I was so tired. Every day I would like stand up and just like, okay. <laughs> you guys remember my like my flip flops? <laughs> I had these flip flops with just just I called them my Jesus water walkers. <laughs> yeah, and, and they just they just showed how tired of just how long I'd been walking on the same ground forever. They were just held together clothes. with tape and They were held together with uh, blue masking tape. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't just like the little thing came out between my toes. They were like worn down. I was touching the floor. I was just like, like for how long have I been walking on the Aviva grounds? Like I was so over it. And then, so Betsy says, I'm going to start looking for places for you. I'm going to start helping. 
And so she goes, oh, I know someone. She just pulls person out of her butt. Um, <laughs> that is where I keep people as well. It's good storage. <laughs> and, sorry, and. <laughs> and um, so then she contacts my now foster mom and asks, well, you know, do you know anyone? You know, like, not even like, will you take her in, but do you know anyone? My foster mom's like, oh yeah, I'll take her in, of course. Like, yeah. And can we acknowledge her here? In the She's right here well, in the bright right green. Here in the <laughs> part of this show on literally 20 minutes notice. <laughs> and Elizabeth, thank you so much for being here and talking to us about the reality of life at Aviva. Oh, thank um, you for having me. They are going to have a table set up in the lobby after the show, so if you have more questions or want to learn more about ways you can volunteer or help, please go check them out. But right now, please give them a huge round of applause for being here. <laughs>